Hey everyone and welcome back. It's that time of the month again and the monthly featured free assets are ready and available for you to download and begin playing around with. Now also if you're watching this video near to the release date you still have a few more days to take part in the massive marketplace sale. As you can see here that one ends on June the 5th. So just a quick overview of the assets that we'll be looking at. This is going to be a really good month, definitely one of my favourites so far. It's very kind of blueprint and technical plugin based, which I think is going to be really nice. So again, really leveraging that kind of learning experience or learning opportunities from the assets this month. So to begin, we've got the modular low poly robots. This is actually a lot more than just a low poly asset pack though. This has a lot of kind of physics driven logic to account for the different components that you attach. Everything is very modular. You've got things like the procedural looking walking mech animations, you've got hover vehicles, you have tanks and different things that you can play around with in there. And next we have the third person story adventure template. Again, this is very much a blueprint package. This is a full project to allow you to recreate, I suppose, a kind of walking simulator. And it has everything you would need, such as being able to draw from data tables for large amounts of information and pack that into the specific objects and items around the map that you want to communicate with. So it makes that kind of process very, very simple. Then we have the first of the more art focused packs, which is going to be the stylized forest. Not too much to say here. It is just a kind of large set of forest based assets in a stylized art style. We then have the Pro Instance Tools plugin, which is something that I didn't know I wanted until I have seen it today. And now it's something I can see has a lot of utility and something that I'll probably be using quite a lot. This is an engine wide plugin, and I'll explain a little bit more about what that means a bit later. And this will allow you to make placing things along splines or based on certain logics or patterns very, very simple in any of your projects. And then finally, we have another art pack here, which is an underground subway. Again, not too much to say on this. A more realistic looking subway here, all very well textured, very well designed, and has a ton of different assets for you to play around with and test inside of your own projects. On top of this, if you're not aware, each month the featured free marketplace content usually comes along with a completely or a kind of forever free pack as well. And this month is something that I'll also be looking at in this video. So this could be a little bit of a longer video this month, as everything in here is really worthwhile taking a look at. If you haven't seen this page before, or you haven't seen it uh, kind of promoted on the news page, I'll be sharing a link to this in the description below, so be sure to take a look at that. But if we slide down a little bit further to the bottom of the page, we can see that the June's permanently free content is the Easy Building System V8. Now this is one of the things that's going to be really useful for a lot of people. I've considered buying this once or twice in the past, but I didn't really have at the time a project that felt like it would really require or I'd be able to make full use of a project like this. So having this available now is going to be really useful and I, I can see a lot of different uh, projects coming about from something like this and it's actually really well structured and just actually feels quite nice to use almost as a little small kind of game project by itself. So the first plugin, I'm going to go through the art plugins first of all. The first one is going to be the underground art pack. So like I said, not a whole lot to say here. Uh, checking the performance and optimization, it all looks very clean. All of the optimization viewports seem to report pretty good kind of um, texturing, low use of transparency, very low amount of overlapping quads and things like that. So well designed, some good stuff to take away if you wanted a game in this kind of art style. You have the, the reference points or the assets directly to use from within this pack. It also has some nice kind of lighting set up as well in the, the main level you can see here. So if you wanted to see how they've set the light probes, the reflection points and things like that, all of that and some post-processing is also ready to pick apart. Next we have the stylized forest, so pretty much the complete opposite end of that. Uh, all of this is very kind of low poly very stylized hand-painted textures, something that I really like. And in fact, this is really good timing. I've just been considering working on one of my personal projects, an idea that I've had going for quite a while. And I think something like this would actually fit really, really well. So you'll probably see something like this being picked apart and used as reference if you are following along with the content on the channel outside of this kind of topic. So it's something I'll definitely be using. And again, looking at all of the optimization views, things like transparency, overlapping quads, all of the important things for something like a landscape with all of the grass and foliage going on. Very, very low hit on performance, all in the green. So again, really good pack, really good to pick apart and see how they've made things and work that into your own project. 
The next one then is a little bit different. So this is the Pro Instance tool. Now, if you're not familiar with the plugin process inside of Unreal, a few steps you may need to take here to get this one working. The first thing is, of course, downloading it and installing it from the Epic Launcher. You'll notice that that will ask you to install it to an engine version rather than a project. Once you've done that, just double check. I'm using 4.26 here, so I've installed it to 4.26 of my engine. And that now means that I can use it in any project using that version of the Unreal Engine. So then to activate this, we're going to go to Edit and Plugins. And from here, again, if you're not familiar, just a quick overview. All of the built-in plugins are the things that the... Uh, Unreal system comes with by default, so the, uh, the physics plugins, the audio and VR plugins, everything like that. So we can ignore that. What we want are the installed plugins. This can come from anywhere on the marketplace. And also if you buy things from outlets like Gumroad, which may still need you to install it as a plugin, you'll find those here in the installed section. Now the Pro Instance tools actually comes under a weird name here, it's under the level design tab. So we're going to click on this, you're going to need to hit the enable button and then it if you haven't already done so, you'll be told that you need to restart the project for this to show. So once you have that done, once you've restarted, what we want to do is in the left hand side in the place actors panel, we can see we've got the pro instance tools. And if you don't have that showing, we can go to window, go to place actors, and that will give you this side panel here. And quite simply, the pro instance tools is something we can just drag into the world. And this is what I meant by we've got different kind of patterns and things that we can create very, very easily. All of this is exposed over here so we can increase the radius of the circle and increase the number of cubes and again all of this we can expose and see the the blueprint code so if we wanted to see how this is working so one that i think could be quite useful something a lot of people might be using uh, my system crashed if you're wondering why the screen may have changed a little bit there uh, but one i think could be quite useful is the pro instance grid again this is just a very simple way to come in quickly create a completely custom size grid here with these different instances. These are currently using static mesh instances. You can change that down here. I don't think I have any others which would fit this kind of scale, but you can very easily come in and check the blueprint code. This will tell you uh, if you wanted to know if you've never worked with grids before, how to set up things like the rows, columns, and everything like that to get this logic spawning as you wanted. And then on top of this, everything's exposed as well. If you go to your engine installation folder structure, go to the plugins, the marketplace, and then find the pro instance tool plugin location. You can also access all of the C++ code, which is responsible for this plugin working as well. So you can kind of pick apart the blueprints in your project and the C++ through that directory location if you wanted to do so. There are plenty of more useful things from this though. So we've got things like the path creator as well, which is spline based. So you can drag this to spawn things along a spline and uh, different shapes. So things like spawning within a cube or within a sphere. All of this is accounted for. Some very, very useful reusable logic, which you'll probably find yourself doing quite often. And this will kind of save you that manual step. Next up, we have the modular low poly robots. Again, this isn't just a kind of visual pack. If we press play, we can see we have a lot of things going here. Uh, I've updated this to Unreal Engine 5 just to test things out, see how it works. I've put on Lumen, not really relevant, but that is all working and it does make it look pretty cool. But from this menu, you can select different types of vehicle types and then different scales of these types, different components to go on them. And you can see in the background, it's saying that we've got things like our suspension test areas. So all of this is based on very kind of nicely simulated physics. We can also create things like these crawlers so we can have things crawling around. And again, super, super useful to break all of this down. So this is going to give you a really, really good insight to see how you can kind of make things more modular, break things into components, add them on to existing kind of mechs and rigs and have these kind of affect each other. And then also looking into these different types of movement. So a super, super huge project. Another one of those which I'm not going to go too deep into in this video, but there's plenty that I'd recommend looking into in your free time when you get the chance to kind of break this project apart and go ahead and see what it has to offer. Then moving on, we have the third person story adventure pack. Again, another big one. There's, there's going to be a theme in this video where everything is actually quite in depth. The, the stuff which is being provided this month is really, really impressive. So much to go into that I can't really spend too much time on any one project. One thing I'd mention about this one, again, I can see it's being very useful. It has, I don't really play the walking simulator kind of genre, 
but from what I've seen of them, it has some of the main kind of features and concepts that I've noticed in those types of games. So I think this is going to be very, very useful if you're interested in that type of genre and wanted to create one of your own. One thing I do like about this, they've even kind of stuck to the same kind of look and feel of those types of games. This kind of hand scribbled font on all of the uh, the interactives and things which I think is really cool. One other thing I'd say as well, because this project does make a large use of data tables, it's gonna be a nice way to see how you can kind of leverage and implement data tables into your own projects. And there are quite a lot of classes. So if you wanted to kind of find where something is happening, again, if you're not too familiar with the engine, it's always worthwhile just coming into the editor. Let's say that you play the game and you're interested to know how the cup is set up, then we can enter the blueprint directly from here. This may seem very logical, but um, after the previous month of my plugin being free, there are a lot of people who will just jump into a project after seemingly not ever using the, the Unreal Engine before. So one thing which, if you're not aware of, is very, very useful to get familiar with when you're trying to find out where some logic is happening. To find that class, you'll notice that the main part of the class here is empty. So what you then want to do is go to the parent class, which you can see up here. Uh, what this means is that the cup, which is in the world, probably doesn't have any logic in it, but it is driving logic from the parent class. So we can dive into this and we can see in here most of the logic is being held or run through this parent class. And again, if that doesn't quite have the thing that you're looking for, then we can see there's another parent class we can jump into here. So the kind of highest level of this interactive class. And again, this may be where you find the kind of setup that you're looking for. Just a quick hint there, like I've mentioned, something I hadn't really considered before, but have noticed over the last month is that do seem to be quite a lot of completely fresh users jumping into quite big projects like this. Uh, the first thing I'd say is it's quite daunting and I would probably recommend against that just because I think it can be really frustrating working with somebody else's code if you're not even sure how to navigate the engine by yourself. But if you're not sure where to find something, always consider and double check if there's a parent class, take a look at what's happening in the level and just to take a browse through the code and see how things are set up that way. Finally, we have the Forever Free Tool, which is our easy building system V8. Like I mentioned, it is very well made all of the code seems to be very well kind of organized in here. There are a lot of examples to pull from. I can really see that things are implemented and even considered in the way that you kind of interact with them. So not just so much the way that the code is working, but also the way that it feels to use the system is very intuitive. I really like the kind of snapping systems that we have here. We're going to jump in. We've got Q to bring up this menu. We can then left click to select the thing that we want to build and E to place it if we have a valid placing area. And this is, if you're looking to build this type of game, this is going to be a really good starting point and kind of taking some reference or hints from the way that this is set up and how yours should probably work, I would say is probably going to be a good idea. If the Valheim building system was as intuitive as this, it would have been far, far less painful to build bigger structures. So really good. It feels really intuitive and nice to work with. Again, as I mentioned in the previous plugin, if you watched that one as well, if you wanted to know how anything's working, Always remember you can find a lot of the blueprints, a lot of even the things like the walls are a blueprint class. So we can jump into those and we can see what the code is doing and you can start pulling this apart hopefully quite easily. And like I mentioned, just to drill this home, always double check to see if there's a parent class. If you're not finding the logic that you think should be in the base class here or the, uh, the class you found in the world, then just take a look in the parent version as well and double check as the logic may be housed somewhere else for that kind of reusability along uh, kind of similar child classes. So that was the content for the month of June, quite a long one, which is why I haven't gone into too much depth on any one of these projects. I think they're all quite easy to use. They all seem very, very well made though. And there's gonna be plenty of stuff here for you to break apart, see how it's working and really start implementing these into your projects. I think this is gonna be a really good month for people. I can see a lot of cool projects being expanded from these plugins this month. And then there are a couple of nice art asset packs to go with it. So really happy with the June monthly free content. So just a reminder, if you enjoy these videos or find them useful, please do leave a like and share the video around. That really helps the channel to grow, reach as many people as possible. And of course, remember to subscribe if you wanted to be kept up to date with any of the videos that go live throughout the week on multiple topics around game development. And if you wanted to get some early access to those videos or even some completely exclusive content, then do consider checking out the Patreon page, which helps support the channel and allows me to keep making on different types of weekly content. Big thank you to all of the people already supporting me on Patreon. Hope you've enjoyed this one, and as ever, thanks for watching, and I will see you all next time.